Okay, you guys have wanted to know how to check somebody's failings for a very long time. So I think it's time to go ahead and show you. Well, I didn't have the right troop comp before to be able to accurately do this. But now that I have, you know, Siege, etc. We're going to go ahead and show you exactly how this goes down. So, I have this person's scout. Gog, whatever, right? Let's go ahead and take a look at the scout. So here he is. Nice amount of resources, blah, blah, blah. Here's the important thing that you should always check. Forget about the troops. That's not as important right now. The wall HP is the first thing that you should note. Because, of course, at 800,000, wall HP is going to be much different than 1.5 or max, etc. The troops, once you take a look at them, go all the way down to the wounded count. If there is no wounded, then just take a note of that. If there is wounded, just make sure that you note that. And then the next thing is make sure that they have infirmaries. Because if they don't have infirmaries, then you're going to be looking for wounded troops when he's never going to have any and you're just, you're just going to be wasting your own troops. So that's the first couple of things that you should know. So wall HP, troop comp, and then of course the uh, the wounded. Now, let's go ahead and uh, get go over here. So I'm going to go ahead and send the uh, the solo first. And then I'm going to explain to you why. Because I don't know if this guy might put like an anti on or something. I don't know. Since we're just going to be checking this out. So I'm going to go ahead and attack. I have already a pre uh, a preset, and this is what I what I have. And let's go ahead and send it out. It's gonna take seven seconds, but you know, um, I do like to attack an infantry wedge, and I'll explain that in a little bit. Okay, so there it goes. It hit. Let me go ahead and send another scout. Cool deal. So of course, defeat. You know, it is what it is. That was that was to be expected. Um, the wounded and dead part is also very important. I'm going to get to that in a bit. Uh, also, you will lose troops. So if you don't want to get like T1 deads, etc., then this is not for you. But it can potentially save you millions of troops. And then here is the scout. So now take a look at the wall HP. Zero. Okay. And now when you go up to wounded, take a look at that. Gladiators are the first thing that is wounded, meaning... That there are in infantry, either infantry phalanx or infantry wedge. But the main thing is that you know that infantry is their front line. Now, what do we do with this information? Let's go ahead and take a look at as to why we did this, right? Now, the reason, let me go ahead and heal. We sent 90,000 fire trebuchet. And look at this, we're going to heal all of them back. Now, there's a specific reason as to why we can heal all of them back. Go ahead and heal them up. Three hours, 16 minutes, boom. Cool deal. Now remember, when we're talking about your infirmaries, keep in mind that 60% of your troops that are injured in skirmishes outside of your turf will be uh, sent into your infirmary. So that's why when you're sending out a, a hit like this, in, and I'll go to my battalion for phalanx check, when you send out something like this, if I'm going to be sending out 90,000 fire trebuchet, I want to make sure that that only makes up 60% of the troops that I'm sending. The rest, I want to make sure that it makes up the other 40%. And technically, the best way to go about it is to have a bunch of T1 that you can throw at it because essentially, you're only going to be losing T1. The rest is going to be wounded. Um, of course, my phalanx check is not messed up because I don't have enough grunts, but that's okay. I'm, I'll make some more. But essentially, what we did here is we had enough grunts to make up 40% of what we were sending compared to the fire trebuchet. And then we were sending four of the other ones, archers, cataphracts, ballistas, not necessary, but, you know, I just sent it because it's a, it's a preset. Um, the reason for that is, and this is how this is going to work. When you send this march, keep in mind that your siege is going to be all the way in the back. But you must include infantry, ranged and cavalry because that is going to keep the enemy's uh, attacks away from your siege and you must include infantry and cavalry because if you only send range they're going to rush out and they're going to go automatically into an infantry phalanx so if you don't already know if you just send range to a wall castle uh, or a castle with a wall then those, those troops will rush out in an infantry phalanx and attack you. Whether they are already in a range phalanx before you hit, etc. It will not matter. They'll rush out 
into an infantry phalanx, so that could mess you up. So make sure that you always send infantry, ranged, and cavalry along with your siege. So now that we got that out of the way, 60% of the troops that you're sending has to be the siege that you're going to be actually using to destroy the wall. 40% is going to be the rest of the quote-unquote fluff, the four cavalry, you know, uh, range, whatever. And then the 40%, I would, I would suggest you always use T1 grunts because they're fairly cheap to build. So, you know, just have, just have a decent amount of grunts. That way you can phalanx check whenever you can. Um, the next very, very important thing is the wall size, okay? So, as you saw on that one, let me go back to it. This one right here. The wall HP was about 872,000. So, there is actually a nice rule of thumb that, that we have, right? So, for walls that are about 500,000 or less, you don't need more than 60,000 siege. For walls that are about a million, you want about 90,000 siege. And for walls that are about 1.5 million, you would want about 120,000 uh, siege. Now, if it's like a max wall, 2 million plus, then you would probably want to send out about 150,000 siege. Also remember that if you increase the siege size that you're going to be sending, you must increase the amount of quote-unquote fluff that you're going to be sending. Because remember, siege can only be 60% uh, of the amount that you're sending if not you're going to start actually losing the siege so all of these points are very important now the next important thing is the actual heroes that you send now i don't think it actually really matters to send siege heroes i just like to use them here because i mean what else am i going to use it on you know what i mean like siege heroes you never use so I, I go ahead and include them here uh there's only four of them so the the fifth one i don't think it really matters i just include like an army hero but again since you're not I including your actual leader it doesn't really matter as much as you might think but it also does add the amount of troops that you can actually send so for instance if you don't send any any leaders then clear the selection yeah it goes down to 250 down to only 200,000 so if you're going to be clearing out like a bigger wall like a 2 million wall for instance then you're going to need more than 200,000 troops to be able to do it effectively so make sure that you uh that you include the the siege heroes uh if you can if you don't have all the siege heroes or don't have all the right ones just make sure that you include decent heroes have them all gold just do not include your leader just just don't okay but regardless this is how you check phalanx this is how you keep your for instance your fire trebuchet intact you don't really want to use destroyers because obviously healing t4 is much much more expensive than healing t3 and if you don't have a lot of t1 or don't want to train a lot of t1s then of course t2 is an option now, just keep in mind that you're probably going to be losing a good 40,000 each time. But of course, since people have millions and millions of T2s, I guess it's not that big a deal. Uh, especially if you're only checking phalanx like every so often, not like every day or something like that. Then you can go ahead and for instance, with this, uh, I can go 90,000, right? And instead of like the grunts, I could just go, I don't know. I don't know, just put like 60,000 gladiators, just something something along those lines. And then just go for sharpshooters, for reptilian riders, just to fill out the rest of the uh, of your formation. And then of course, like I mentioned before, the more uh, fire trebuchets that, that are, are going up, like for instance, if you go like 150,000, then you want to make sure that you can also increase the amount of gladiators. But just... You know, if you can if you can do it the smarter way and keep a bunch of like T1 grunts. And when I mean a bunch, I don't mean like millions either. I mean like maybe 200, 300,000, you'll be good to go. So, um, I think I pretty much covered everything. There is also another way for you to check a phalanx if they are running anti-scout. But that is going to be a video for another time. For this one, if you have their scout like this one... The, the amount of troops they have does not matter. The only thing that matters is the wall HP. Make sure that they have infirmary so you can check the wounded. If they do not, like if in the off chance that they do not 
have infirmaries and they're not gonna get wounded then you just take a look at the troops and take a look from one scout to the next which troop actually got touched so for instance if i attack this and they don't have any infirmaries i would just check their t1s or their t2s and see which number decreased and then I would know that that's the formation they're in. So hopefully this clears up some of the confusion or some of the uh, the questions that were out there. Um, if you have any questions, leave it in the comment section. And I'll, uh, I'll see if I can get to it if it was not covered on this video. But yeah, appreciate you guys for watching. And until later.